Well, let's talk a little bit about the scenarios that could have Brandon Ayuk's replacement being drafted either on Thursday or Friday or possibly over the weekend next week with a day three pick. Um, let, let's talk about who won't be there. The price of poker, I believe, is just too high all around on Marvin Harrison Jr. from Ohio State, Romo Ndunze from Washington, and Malik Neighbors of LSU. I don't think there's a trade involving Brandon Ayuk that would get the Niners high enough in this draft to nab one of those three players. Do you agree that the three of them are all probably a bridge too far for the Niners in this draft? Yeah, unless okay. the New York Giants decide. I mean, you know, it's all about Brian Dable's job security. If Brian Dable thinks he's fired at the end of the year, then he may do something dramatic, um, you know, and and neighbors could somehow wind up uh, being involved. But I don't I, I think he's got more job security than than a lot of people do. I don't think he's out at the end of the year. So, yeah, I would say Harrison neighbors, a Dunze and probably even Brian Thomas, Jr., are probably outside of their outside of their ability to, you know, but then Thomas Jr., you know, and I've been told that lots of people love him. And so he's probably going to go in the top 15. So I would say any receiver that that's going to go in the top 15 and those four are the mo best candidates are probably too rich for their blood. Right. I had Brian Thomas Jr. right on that maybe line. Maybe he's... 18, 19, 20, still hanging around, and there is a deal to be made to get aggressive for him, the wide receiver out of LSU. Uh, Troy Franklin, the wide receiver out of Oregon, is another one of those maybes. Maybe he could be there. Realistic targets. Back of the first round, day two answers for the 49ers. Larry, I got a small group of names that I'd like to go over with you, then we'll see what you got. We'll start with a player that you and I have been talking about for weeks now, Xavier Leggett, 6'3", 227 out of South Carolina, massive production last season, which was just a huge step up in profile for him. He only had 200 yards his first few years all combined at South Carolina, and then he has this monster year last year for the Gamecocks. Um, he feels like a Shanahan target, like he runs through guys and around guys. He's got great straight line speed. Um, there's an awful lot to like about Xavier Leggett, and you've, I've, we've, we've already talked about him quite a bit. High school quarterback. You know, he graduated from Mullins High School in South Carolina. He played quarterback as a senior. And you're right. He only, the only knock on on Xavier Leggett because he's big, strong, fast, looks a lot like an AJ Brown. Already has earned his degree, by the way. Um, is just that he really didn't do a ton in you know 2020, 2021, 2022. He really busted out with an incredible senior season this year in 2023. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you're talking about. Big, strong, fast. He's the SEC. He was on the SEC academic honor roll. Um, you know, this guy's tough. He won the Gamecocks Toughness Award. Uh, he was a Blitnikoff semifinalist. I mean, he was he was a terrific uh, player across the board. And <clears throat> when you watch his film, you sit there and go, wow, this guy gets separation. And then he also runs away from people. He's big and physical and can kind of run through the middle of the field without any fear. Yeah, he he's he's exciting. I see the 49ers, if they're going to replace Brandon Ayuk in this draft, looking for maybe a bigger body. And that's what Xavier Leggett is. Xavier Leggett is just a big dude playing wide receiver. He's got that NFL body. He's got what looked to be translatable NFL skills. That could be the name right there. Another wide receiver that I kind of found and I, I like more in this draft uh, after kind of putting together this little segment over the weekend, Larry, just watching you know, some YouTube clips and highlights of players. And we haven't talked about this guy at all. I don't think in any wake up, you and I have brought up the name Roman Wilson who is a six-foot-tall, 192-pound wide receiver out of Michigan, very aggressive at the point of the catch. In other words, he battles for the football. And because he's a Harbaugh guy, you don't have to sell him on blocking downfield in the running game. He already does that, and he does it really, really well. He's physical. He's not the biggest dude. It's six-foot, 192, but he, he's got all the scrappiness in him 
that looks like would be, you know, a perfect fit for how the 49ers play football. Roman Wilson is a name we haven't talked about at all. What do you think? Well, he's from Maui. Um, and you know, he's, he, he, the only downs, I mean, he's an academic, all big 10 honoree. He was incredibly productive, smart guy, very, very polished wide receiver. Um, you know, the downside is that he goes to the ground pretty easily. There's not a lot of run after the catch there. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't break a lot of tackles. You know, he really doesn't. He, he's not a guy who's going to catch it in a crowd and take a couple hits and keep rolling. But he's very polished and, um, you know, had an incredible role in the national championship team. Um, yeah, he's a little smaller. He's a little, you know, he's 5'11", 185. Um, he's got good ball skills. Yeah, there's a lot to like there. So the next two guys that I have for you, forget about their names, forget about where they are, where they're from. Let's just look at how the 49ers want to play football. And that's why I think these two guys could be fits. Starting with Malachi Corley. 5'11", 210 out of Western Kentucky. He's the screen machine. Larry, and we know the 49ers love to run screens. Western Kentucky threw him 149 screen targets over the last three years, according to Pro Football Focus. He's built like a fire hydrant. Uh, defensive backs constantly bounce off him. Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky, who is a guy that you were talking about a couple weeks ago. You do like him. I do. But, you know, it's funny. Um, the more I watched him, the more I actually fell in love with their quarterback. Um, I, I, I like Austin Reed, the quarterback at Western Kentucky, an awful lot. This kid, Corley, is from Orange City, Florida. Uh, Campbellsville High School he went to in Kentucky. Um, and he's kind of like a poor man's Debo, you know. He, But he is a poor man's Debo. He's not Debo. You know, I mean, he's not as he's not as thick. I don't think he's quite as explosive, but, you know, the game means a lot to him. He does break tackles. Um, you know, he was he's a first team all conference player in Conference USA. He looked really good at the Shrine game. Uh, senior Bowl co-offensive player of the week. The Niners always seem like they like players who excel during the Senior Bowl. He definitely did. Um, so, yeah, good, really good player tough to bring down um, and was named the top wide receiver on the national team at the senior bowl by the defensive back teammates during the, during practice for the event. So, you know, he's, he's an, he's a really nice player. He played in 49 games, 32 starts in four seasons for the Hilltoppers, 29 touchdowns during that period, averaged about 62 yards per game receiving over 49 games. Uh, but as I said, the more I watched uh, Western Kentucky and Corley, the more I really think that Austin Reed is worth drafting the quarterback there. He's just a, he's a leader. He's a, he's got a great delivery. He's got a 4.4 GPA. It's kind of like this year's Brock Purdy, 6'2", 220. Um, really liked him. So he, he transferred to Western Kentucky or to Western Kentucky to replace Bailey Zappi. And then Corley was his number one receiver. I wouldn't mind having both, to be honest. And look, Malachi Corley is there second round for sure. He's not a first yeah. round pick. He's a second He's round probably player. a day three pick, Larry. I mean, really, unless somebody falls deeply in love. He's going to be going to the weekend in the draft in Detroit. So I, I would say he's a third round pick. Okay. But we'll see. We'll see. That's right. That's what, that, so I, I wish that they will we'll get into this a little bit later. I wish they would change the draft format just a little. We'll get to that later. I mean, um, you know, if the first pick, is a, you know, they, they list him right around 60 on the list. And I'm and I'm and I and I think that's probably where he's going to go, which would be end of round two. OK. All right. Beginning of round I three. Would, so I just wish they would do the I wish the first day of the draft was the first two rounds. It's funny. Midway through the first round, I'm always like. Man, this is dragging. Can we pick this up here? By the time they get to the end of the first round, I'm like, all right, now I'm officially settled in. Like, let's keep going. Uh, I wish they would do night one, the first two rounds, day two being rounds three and four, and then on Friday or the weekend is when you clean up the rest of the draft. I wish they would do two rounds on the first day, two rounds on the second day, and then finish it all up afterwards instead of going one, two, and then finishing it up over the weekend. Why uh, do you wish for this? 
because I just get it right when they get to the end of the draft of that first round, I'm ready to keep going. Like I, I I'm, I'm a little frustrated by how it's all moving. And then all of a sudden it, it, it starts to move. And now I'm, now I'm in now it looks like, like you sucked <laughs> me in and now you're going to spit me out. I, I'm ready to keep going. All right. Uh, I'm, I, I like chasing that second round. Uh, Malik Washington, final name here for you, Larry. Malik Washington out of Virginia, the smallest dude of all that we have talked about just in terms of physical stature. He's 5'8", 191, but if you want a guy who creates after the catch, and remember, I'm looking for wide receivers that fit attributes that the 49ers covet, he led college football with 110 receptions, and he was ranked fourth with a school record, uh, 1,426 receiving yards, and he is a beast after the catch. 710 yards after the catch with 387 coming after contact. He's got a 42-and-a-half-inch vert. So for a guy who ain't big, he plays big, and he plays right through guys, and yards after the catch – I can't think of an attribute that Kyle Shanahan is looking for more than that in his offense. Yeah, this kid's awesome. He's from Lawrenceville, Georgia. He started at Northwestern. He transferred um, to Virginia, and you know he was a great player in two different conferences. And if you and if if there were, you know, if you if you if 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 tons of people played fantasy college football, this guy would be going much higher because this guy is your is winning you your fantasy. College football, dude, 110 uh, catches. Yeah, 110, 110 catches is. A I mean, if you look at some of the game up. lines, I mean, just look at some of the game lines against Vatek, 14 catches for 115. Um, against Duke, eight catches for 112. The next week against Louisville, nine catches for 155. Um, against G Tech, 11 catches for 109. Against the Hurricanes, 12 for 152. Against Carolina, 12 for 115. These are all in a row. And then against William and Mary, 7 for 112. Nine touchdowns receiving, um, you know, 110 receptions. You know, the thing about him is he's a, he's a slot receiver. He's, he doesn't have super separating speed, and he's small. Does any so Niner, got, though, is super got, separating speed what makes the Niners wide receivers dangerous? Because they don't really have a lot of that. Well, but you, the only thing is you want to see receivers separate at the college level if you know, because at the pro level it's a whole no, whole nother level. So right. it's like you want to see them separate. And that would that's why this I mean, the I just read you first round production. So but he ain't going in the first round. So why is he not going in the first round? Because he's small and he doesn't separate. So um, we'll see. I, I think he's going to be a very good, productive pick. Uh, my guess is he'll be drafted in the third round, uh, but he might go in the second round if there's a desperate team, or he could fall to the fourth round if people really, you know, are concerned about the size and the lack of separation. But there's no doubt Malik Washington is a big time guy. The other name that you got to mention, I think, in here too, is Adonai Mitchell, um, who started at Georgia. Texas, transferred right? to Texas. Yeah, Texas. And he is from Texas. He's from Missouri City, Texas. He was heavily recruited, could have gone anywhere. Decided he's a 6'4", 190-pound receiver who runs in the four threes. He's an incredible talent. He told Kirby, I want to transfer because he has a little girl. She lives in Texas. He wanted to be closer to his daughter. And so that was it. And he transferred to Texas and and he's he's a big time guy, man. I mean, he, he's a he's a threat in the red zone. Uh, he's angular. He's big. He's he's athletic. He's fast. I mean, there's a lot to like there too. Any other name? You just offered the kid from Texas. Any other name? You know, Javon Baker is a name that I've seen pop up a few different times in our chat here. Out of uh, where was he? University of Central Florida, USF, U- UCF, yeah. what, UCF. What, one, one of those. UCF. I yeah, mean, one of those um, other Florida schools. You know, okay, so we threw out the the no, but the absolute no's are Harrison Neighbors, Adunze, and probably Brian Thomas. Then there's Troy Franklin. You didn't mention Lad McConkey. Um, you know, he only had two touchdowns, but he ran in the four threes. A lot of people really like him. You didn't mention Keon Coleman from Florida State, who's just got a massive catch radius, but a slowish forty time. 
And then I think the other guy that has to be mentioned here is Ricky Pearsall from Florida, who's like 6'1", 190, and he's an incredible player. Uh, Wasn't there the name productive. of a NASCAR driver? Wasn't there a NASCAR driver named Ricky Pearsall? That sounds about right. <laughs> I don't know if he's related. But this guy, you know, um, really good player. Um, you know, he's, he's from Chandler, Arizona. He's another academic honor roll guy. Um, you know, so he started at Arizona State and he transferred to Florida and, you know, has already earned his bachelor's degree. Um, as I said, smart kid, good size, great ball skills, makes tons of plays, run after the catch. There's a little, I kind of question the durability because he's a little bit, you know, underpowered. Like he looks like the kind of guy that you could hit him a couple times really, really hard and separate him from the football. But I mean, if you're looking for just, you know, a, a guy who can run the routes, make the catches, played in the SEC, you know, I mean, Ricky Pearsall is a tremendous player.